it's October 4th and Sue and I have been at the Wisconsin State Fair RV Park for about four and a half months and we're going to be leaving actually in about a week and you can see in the background here is Miles right here. You can see that we've got the bikes uh, out and covered in the background here. You'll notice that the Honda isn't there. Sue's actually visiting her mom and kind of saying goodbye uh, for uh, our upcoming trip. Probably won't be back, uh, you know, for six months maybe at least. So uh, she wanted to make sure she spent some quality time with her mom. Uh, I'm gonna take a little walk with you guys and maybe give you a report on the things that are coming up for us to do and the things that we've been working on and uh, you know try to keep everybody informed on the trials and tribulations of being a full-timer. I'm actually on a mission right now. I am walking in a much quieter area uh, about a block off the 76th Street road that we're parked up against so I could talk to you guys and you could actually hear me and tell you what I've been working on the last probably two three days I could tell you that after three years of travel I truly can't imagine how difficult it must have been for RVers to travel back when they didn't have the internet and satellite views and all of the campgrounds loaded uh, on the internet so that you can look at the reviews and the prices and to see what it's like pulling in. I really tip my hat to all of the travelers before us that really paved the way and made it easier for us. We've been using RV Trip Wizard from the get-go and we didn't know that it was the best. We didn't know we had stumbled on to the perfect software planning tool right from the beginning. But I can tell you, any newbies out there, if you want to cut right to the chase, go through the process of learning the learning curve of using that software. It's not really that difficult. There's uh, quite a few bloggers out there that actually will walk you through the steps. The RV Trip Wizard people themselves down in the bottom of the screen will actually show you a tour of how it works and once you get used to the peculiarities and how to use the constraints that are built into the software it's just fantastic. So this is actually the route that Sue and I have planned coming up. We're in the State Fair RV park right now and all of these places in red are going to be the stops that we're going to hit along the way. You can see that we have a winery, we have a rest stop, those are harvest hosts, this is a harvest host as well, it's a museum. Here's a real money saver, this is a Passport America place. Uh, that's the beauty of this software. A lot of times it uh, tells the affiliation of the park that you're in and Passport America is typically some of the cheapest stays because you'll get a 50% break on the rate if you're a Passport of America member, which is certainly worth it. I could tell you that over here, when we're staying at West Wind RV Park, uh, they accepted um, Passport America, and it was, you know, a relatively expensive resort, and the minute I told them I had that card, all of a sudden uh, the bill was cut in half. It was, you know, like a dream come true. You could see this odd shape over here. Um, it Apparently, one of these uh, stops, it's probably this stop here, this Elks Lodge, is highlighted, and this odd shape here actually shows you in all of the different directions from that dot, that P, on what, uh, where could I get with the time limits that I s set for my driving. Now, uh, I think our constraints are that we don't want to drive more than uh, four hours, and we also put our average speed at only 50 miles an hour. So this odd shape that's here 
is probably how far we could get driving the speed limit on all the different roads that are around there. On this left column, these are all the different places. Uh, let's go down here to this uh, west wind here. Uh, I will highlight this particular stay, the West Wind RV Resort. When you click the more details, it tells you all sorts of information about this particular park. You can choose to pound through the pictures that will show you different things about the park. Usually there's more pictures than sh shown here. You can click on the features that will tell you uh, what type of service you're going to have, what to expect, you know, do they have a pool. Uh, people can review them so you can see what you're getting into. You, of course, have to take these with a grain of salt, you know, if all of them are great. And we have, in fact, been to this place, and this is a great place. I don't know what this person's problem was. It only had two stars, but I hope they're having a better day today. Uh, one of the good things uh, about this particular uh, screen that you can pop up is that it tells you all the tips and tricks uh, and questions and answers about that particular site that you're at. And many times you can discover things that you didn't even know existed in that area that you might want to visit. That happened to us over here when we had booked this Silver City one here. And I looked at the more details and somebody told me about the Cliff Dwellings National Monument and then talked about the Gila, uh, the, the uh, Gila Cliff Catwalks. Oh my God, absolutely perfect thing for, um, you know, me and Sue to do. It's about as, uh, uh, COVID safe as you're going to get very wide open we didn't want to just blow through hundreds of gallons of diesel relocating from Milwaukee to California so we're actually going to be touring this area now imagine if for whatever reason you decided last minute not to stay at this place and you're going oh my god I gotta find a place if you hit the uh, show the parks again then all of a sudden all of these different places that are in and around where you were looking at in the first place light up. So you can see that it's real easy to change your mind or shift gears if you have to. I can't impress upon you on how great this planning tool is and software. And I would say that if you have RV Trip Wizard and if you're members of Passport America and Harvest Host, and maybe even all stays just to throw uh, another one in there. You will have everything you need to find the places to stay uh, the easiest so that uh, your travel, you can concentrate on traveling and not have an anxiety about uh, where you're going to be staying. Uh, I guess the smaller the rig you is, the less anxiety you can have. Uh, we um, want to make sure that we have a place and we pretty much don't wing it. Uh, normally we don't have this many places booked but we have a timeline we have to be at a place here in California November 1st so we're gonna be booking it. Now we're gonna be leaving we have 12 stops between Milwaukee Wisconsin and where we're going in California which is just outside of Pasadena. Uh, Sue's daughter has moved there we got a new uh, grandson to go see. Uh, we're going to try to, or not try, we're going to accomplish traveling as socially distanced and as masked up as we can. We'll do all the proper protocols. When you're full time, you have to live somewhere. And with the fragileness of RVs, you can try to live somewhere where there's snow and ice and wind and rain, but it just beats the heck out of your RV. So it's the way it is. So these 12 stops that I'm talking about, I can tell you that it was quite a bit of work because this time around, we tried to do what a lot of our subscribers 
told us that we should man up on and try. Uh, we have plenty of people that tell us that staying at Walmarts and Cabela's is the way to go. And I kind of want to do this in baby steps. I'm hoping to uh, pick the easier route, which is to stay at Harvest Hosts, which are uh, not only beautiful places to stay typically, and they're kind of built-in attractions. They're typically out of the way. We're not going to have any services for the most part, so we'll be able to see how good we are with our generator and with our solar system. We'll see if our inverter, which has been giving us a little uh, hints that maybe something is right, hopefully uh, that won't be a problem. But more importantly, it will give you a good upcoming peek into what it's like because the harvest hosts that we selected, uh, we selected mostly by location, but if I had a choice between a few in a particular area and we had already been at a winery, I would, for instance, take one of the other choices that was something else to show you guys. Um, if my memory serves me correct, the first place we're gonna stay at is actually an airport that specializes in parachuting. And so if we get there early enough and if the day is warm enough, when that day comes in about a week and a half, they, we, we might be able to capture some of the planes taking off and landing. Uh, after that stop, I believe, is a winery which we've selected. That was a, a getting a little tougher because a lot of the wineries are not open on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesdays. So you have to plan your arrival date properly or that gets screwed up. One of the harvest hosts was a little odd where it's actually a truck stop. And it's not a truck stop where they have diesel pumps or anything. It's actually kind of a rest stop. But it, it, it struck me as kind of strange that it was on the harvest host site. Nonetheless, that's going to be one of our stops. So we'll be staying in a rest stop overnight. Uh, a little bit later on, we're scheduled in an uh, Route 66 museum. I have did as much research as I can to make sure these places are open due to COVID. And then I looked at the place to make sure it was big enough and roomy enough. And if it didn't look like it was well attended, that was even more attractive for me and Sue. We're going to really try to be safe and responsible. Probably the best thing would be to not travel at all. But like I mentioned, we got to be somewhere and we certainly don't want to be in Wisconsin when it's snowing. So our whole goal here is to spend about 12 days taking our time, uh, driving maybe about four hours at a crack and making our way to California. And once we get there, we'll hunker down there for a while. The other couple of stops that are coming to mind here is a place in Yuma that we've stayed at in the past. A uh, really great swimming pool. I kind of don't want to let the cat out of the bag right now, but we've got a special guest we're going to be dropping in on in Yuma. And anybody that's watched our channel for a while might be able to guess uh, who those folks are. Uh, we'll leave it at that. One of the stops that we're going to be at is uh, the Double D uh, RV Resort in Texola. Um, right before the Texas border. Uh, I think it's in Oklahoma. Uh, if that's incorrect, I will correct it on this video. That's a place that we stayed at and we actually did a video on it uh, as a ghost town. And it's kind of sad to see that here we are, I don't know, about two years later, we're going back to the same place and it's kind of even more of a ghost town now because apparently the restaurant that was uh, on site is no longer operating and the campground itself is still open but now it's kind of a serve yourself pay on the honor system when you get there uh, so we'll do a real little recap on that place and we'll link uh, in the video here and down in the description uh, that 
particular episode. Uh, that was one of my favorite episodes. Uh, great music. Sue did a really good job trying to capture what it was like to live in this little uh, ghost town. After we're in Yuma for three days, we're going to go back to a place called Catalina Spa in Desert Hot Springs. Now, when I was looking at our route planning to get back eventually to the place that we have uh, booked for the first time in California, it just worked out from a mileage standpoint that in that area is where we should stay. And I gotta be honest with you that uh, I just couldn't get past not wanting to experience their hot springs pool again. That's the pool that we would walk to maybe eight o'clock at night. We'd literally have our winter jackets on and we would walk to the pool thinking that we're gonna just spend about 45 minutes there and you know have a nice soak and then go in the hot tub right before we go to bed. And lo and behold, we wouldn't get back till midnight at night. So we've got uh, three nights booked there. Uh, the, the one thing that's really nerve wracking when you're driving an RV and you have so many stops booked, uh, you just hope that you don't have some calamity along the way because if you do, in addition to dealing with the calamity, you're gonna have 10 or 12 reservations that are all goofed up and it's gonna be you know hours on the phone and on the internet sending emails because a lot of these places uh, late in the season and because of COVID, they don't exactly have big staffs anymore. So a lot of times it might take a day or two to get a confirmation of whether or not they know that you may not be showing up. So I'm coming to the uh, busier road here again here. So traffic noise is gonna be a problem. So I'm gonna sign off temporarily here. The whole mission for me is to capture a picture for Sue because she's gonna do a segment a uh, small segment on the Wisconsin State Fair cream puffs that she uh, has gotten. Actually, they're sitting in the refrigerator right now. There's two and a half of them left, and I need a picture of the cream puff sign. And if I don't get it, I would be in really big trouble. Well, I got my mission done, taking the photographs and the videos for Sue. I'm sure she'll like it. As I was walking back, I remembered about a couple other things that I should tell you about. It's going to be on our route. We're going to stop at the Gila National Forest. And I think it's in New Mexico. I hope I got that right. Uh, if not, I'll correct it. It's spelled G-I-L-A. And there's two awesome things that we're hoping to see. Uh, it looks like they're kind of a COVID safe activity because it's such a big area and you can really spread out and of course wear your mask. Uh, we're staying there for three days in a private campground so that we can have full hookups and uh, not have any issues there. The first thing actually is to visit a fairly large cliff dwellers um, uh, runes and it looked really well preserved and it looked like you can get fairly close to everything and possibly even walk inside of it certainly sue will be able to i see that there's kind of a precarious ladder to go up and if i'm not having a good back day trust me the chan man won't be going up there but uh, I'll send Sue up with a couple of cameras so we'll be sure to get something good. Then the very next day, we'll travel over to the GILA, the Gila uh, Catwalks. And it's really a kind of a magnificent, really ultra bomb proof walkway slash catwalks 
that's built into the side of these canyon walls that goes through a uh, a river area that was carved into the rocks by the water. So those are the type of things that really prompted Sue and I to do this whole adventure. Uh, we're kind of not campers, we always say that. We're tourists. We want to just see the many things there are to see. I can tell you that unlike other YouTubers that are finding all sorts of places to go and see, uh, we're older and I certainly am way more cautious uh, than Sue. Sue's a lot healthier than me. She's five years younger and but yet we both are of the like minds that we have to be careful to preserve the gift of good health. So I did not find it particularly easy. Remember this is October 4th 2020. I did not find it particularly easy to find things that were totally open. One of the things we wanted to see was in Arizona, the Biosphere 2, and I was all excited, like, oh my God, this, I've always wanted to see this place. It's always really intrigued me from an engineering standpoint. It's a very big place. I'm thinking that the tour could be all spaced out and everything. Lo and behold, go to the website, and just like many things, it's really not open. When we start our journey, like many times, the first place we're going is the repair place that's gonna be putting my start batteries in. I'm not having any trouble with my starting batteries, but they're three years old. They have a one year guarantee. I'm living on the edge, folks. So I'm gonna put two brand new ones in, so that is the least of my worries. So as we're wrapping up our stay here, we do have a lot of things to do, like to order our mail, uh, since we are domiciled in Florida, we had to wait until a certain point where we could order our mail-in bats for the ballots for the presidential election. So we had to wait for that. Sue's wrapping up her dental visits. She had braces on for the last couple of years, and now she's going to have an implant put in, and she'll be uh, brand new. We're going to hang around a couple of days to make sure everything's ship shape, uh, and then we'll take off. We want to thank everybody that's been watching our channel for the last uh, two years that we've been doing this. We still find it a lot of fun. It's an immense amount of work. Uh, as we've gotten to the point where we have over 27,000 subscribers now, and I've always tried to uh, reply to each and every um, comment that I get in the videos, we're starting to see that uh, that might have to change. and. What we have decided is that we want to reply to the comments a little bit more efficiently. And by that I mean if somebody asks a question that is really a great question and a lot of people need the answer, and a lot of people that don't even know they have that question yet need the answer, we wanted to put these answers on a website. Now Sue's actually been working on uh, our website literally since we were in Florida in Polk City and she's been teaching herself uh, WordPress and working with Elementor. I'm real proud of her, the job she's done. Uh, we're going to try to get that website going probably you know shortly I can't really tell you when uh, every time we think it's ready to go we find something that we need to do and actually I've been screwing Sue up the most by screwing around with all sorts of different things rather than helping her but eventually we're going to get to the point where we will certainly read each and every comment because those are the things that really uh, provide us joy and feedback into what we're doing and more importantly what we should be doing or redirecting our efforts or going to places that we might miss if we didn't have the ability to have people that have been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, uh, telling us where to go and what to do, where to go in a good way. Um, so in the future, uh, and I don't know when that future is going to be, but I'm thinking that the comment replying will uh, kind of defer to our website so that when I finally answer something, especially if I answer it uh, with any amount of uh, um, thoughtfulness and in-depth, that it can be something that's a legacy answer and other people can read it in the future and not be buried in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching. If you've uh, enjoyed this update, if you enjoy our channel, 
please consider subscribing. Uh, hit the notification bell so you know when something's coming. You pretty much know when everything's coming. It's always on a Sunday. It's usually in the morning. If there's ever a time we're going to miss something, it might be in the next couple weeks because we're going to be traveling 12 different stops uh, over about 15, 16 days. And uh, we'll see how crazy that is. Hey, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.